Hello Lava friends, here's what's new in your favorite PHP framework. Let's go! With Laravel 11, we introduced a new context facade, which you hopefully have already used and I've already shown you how it works in the last video. But there is also a global helper now for you to use. For adding something to the current context, you need to provide an array like this. Thank you, Michael. Another new helper, which now is brand new, is the Fluent Helper. So we have here an array of data. We have a user, we have Philo. Philo is the guy who contributed this feature. He's from the Netherlands and he's a very nice guy. And he got two blog posts. Now in Laravel, mostly when we work with data, we want to use a collection. So let's create a collection data. And now we can get a user by using the get method here. And then we're just providing user as a key. And fair enough, we should see now the user way this works. So what about if we want to get now the name from the user? So we need to use this array syntax, which is not so nice. So what we can do instead is use the gator that get helper, which also works in level. We're providing our data and then the key here, we can use dot notation in order to get the name. So this works. But for another example, for example, let's get our blog posts here from Philo. This also works, but what if we want to get only the titles? Now we need to make this a collection here, wrap collect around the data get, and then we have our plug method to just get the titles. And fair enough, this works. But now we have collect, we have data get, this is not very nice. So we have a new way to do this now with the Fluent Helper by Philo. So we're providing our data array, and what we can now do is we can use the get method again, similar to a collection, to get a specific user, this works. But what also works is we can directly call user on it like this. And this also works, which is a very nice syntax. But now again, we want to get the name here. So we get back user.name. So we have dot notation here supported, which is super cool. Okay, so what about our posts here? So how do we deal with this? So what we can do is now again use get to get our posts, this works. But how do we get now the titles? So instead of get, we can also call the collect method, which just makes a collection from our posts here. And now we can use the plug method title here and we get the titles back. And look at this, how fluently this looks now with give me the data, collect, and then plug our titles out, which is pretty cool. Another cool thing here is, let's say we want to deal with the address here of Fido. So what we can do is we can also scope data. So first, let's say we get the address here with user address. This gives us the data, you can see. But now we can run anything on this, like for example, to array or to JSON methods. For this to work, we need now this new scope method. So let's say our scope here is from data with the key user address. This is the scope and now we can call methods like to array. Let's give us an array of this, this works, but we can also run here to JSON, which is pretty nice. We have now his address in JSON. And this is how this works now fluently with this new helper where you can just chain nice methods here or directly call the user if you want to, which is pretty cool. Thank you, Philo. Next, we have a new assertion when testing Adisan commands. So here in this test, I want to make sure that we get some specific output from our Adisan command, which is a backup command. We expect some output, and if I run this, this will work. Let's take a look at our command here. It's pretty simple because it's almost empty, but we are providing here this info. Let's get rid of this, and now let's take a look how we can test this. This of course fails because now we have no output, but we want to make sure that we have no output and we can do this now with the doesn't expect output method here. Let's change the title of the test and this now works as well. So whenever you want to make sure you don't have any output, you can do this. Thank you, Nunu. And last, I'd like to show you how you can define schedule task in your bootstraps app file. So I'm here inside the console.php file on the routes where we can define our artisan commands definitions, but also schedule them like here, which I have done for my backup command. We can do this here with the schedule facade and then provide our command. We want to run it daily. 
But what we can also can do is get rid of this here and let's go to our bootstrap app file. In level 11, this is a file where you can customize your application quite a bit to your needs. Like you can already see here with routing, I can define a route files being included, middleware exceptions, a lot of stuff. And what we can do now as well is um, schedule stuff. With the with schedule method, we have now an instance of our scheduler and we can use the command method to use our backup command and run this daily. So this is now a new place where you can also define this. And the advantage is that you all have this customization for application in one place if you want to. Of course, you can still use the console.php file as well. Thank you, Nuno, again. That's it from this week. Let me know what you like the most from the new features in the comments and have fun with those new features. See you next time. Bye.